Welcome, Dylan. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. It's an honour, mate. Appreciate Thanks, you being brother. here. Big love, man. Yeah. Wicked. Um, listen, I'm just here to, to share my story and hopefully inspire, like I said to you, George, inspire, you know, one or two people. Um, hopefully it inspires people to put one foot in front of the other, you know? So yeah, thank you. That's why I'm here. Yeah. And uh, so Dylan, like, tell us, um, tell about the earliest, early years of your life. Like what, uh, what were you up to and where, where were you living? And yeah, so, um, I grew up in North London. Um, you know, everything that I share on this podcast is, is, is an open book. It's me. Um, and like I said, I'm not sharing it from a perspective of a sob story or anything like that, or to get attention or anything like that. For me, it's about sharing a story that's, um, a story of inspiration and, and transformation as well, because that's essentially what I've gone through mm -hmm. and what people I coach go through as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, look, growing up, I, I didn't have the, the best childhood. Um, I had uh, parents that were, you know, engaged with substance abuse and what have you, um, my mum specifically. And, you know, it was, it, it, was, it was tough growing up a lot of the time. Um, How old were you around this age? from birth really yeah. from birth you know up until my adult years really you know I've really? been through ups and downs with her but um yeah for me it was a, 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 a quite a tough upbringing um seeing your mum go through that and and not really being able to to kind of save her from from addiction so um yeah that's 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 what I went through but um mm. growing up it was it was tough to kind of relate to the world you know if you speak to kids that have gone through similar sort of issues you know we all kind of carry the same sort of baggage resonate resonate mm. with each other yeah 100 yeah, yeah. percent. you know lack of confidence lack of self-esteem lack of relatability mm. feeling angry resentful um so that was kind of me growing up even up until the age of you know 16 17 18 even did you ever go get help or um, yeah, growing up, I had uh, like various counsellors. Yeah, yeah. But it was yeah. uh, it was kind of tough for me to to actually open up as I am doing now. You mm. know, I think having a son myself uh, kind of has made me reflect upon my life and be able to open up. I think there's a maturity thing as well. Uh, you Definitely. Because you know, but having done that myself is. You know, when you're younger, you might not quite understand it and you might think this is a waste of time or I've got better things to be doing. And yeah. so, you know, yeah, think. As in, had counseling. Yeah, yeah. So it's about like, have, you know, doing things at the right time when you're yeah. at that kind of mature level in your life. Yeah. 100%. Uh, when you're ready to. Ready to, yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, as a kid growing up, I wasn't ready to talk about things and talk about my feelings and what had gone on. So, yeah, for me, it was kind of tough. But, um, yeah, growing up. Uh, you know, I, I was kind of isolated. I felt isolated, alone, um, like nobody understood me. Um, and as a result of that, you know, struggled to really communicate with others and express myself and always had this kind of bravado and this hard exterior. So I was unapproachable. And yeah, it was just it was just uh, a little bit of a weird time for me, mm. you know. Um, but growing up kind of led me to, to where I am today. And on the path of transformation you know that's why i'm here to kind of share my my story and hopefully like i said inspire a few people to if they are struggling right now to take that journey and and realize that they can transform their life and mm -hmm. not just their body but their life essentially and and be the person that they want to be and aspire to be you know were, were you always in good shape no no, no. so growing up I, I mean uh i wouldn't say I, I, I was out of shape or anything like that um my my story really kind of resonates around using the physical transformation to the transform the inner self yeah, nice. um, on all levels from your confidence, your happiness, your self-esteem. There's so much to be said about all of that. Yeah. 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 It's power. It's a powerful thing because even when I was younger and I was heavily obese, like, you know, depressed all the time, anxiety. And, but as soon as I started training and really, and, and like, I'm a bit of an animal when I train. So <laughs> like I've, I've, something switches in my head, but the like the, is it serotonin like what was the feel good the feel good factor the feel good factor. Oh, yeah, you it's things. insane it's like it's so um yeah it's like yeah it can it can feel as good as a drug or something like that 100 right? percent. yeah so, so so you um so you you hadn't transformed your body like you so, so you weren't in always good shape it, it, i wouldn't say i was out of shape right um but for me it was more about sort of uh building a stronger exterior 
mm. and using the transformation to as a, almost like a vehicle to transform my life. So I was very much uh, an introvert. I still am very much an introvert. Um, w- liked his own company, uh, lack of confidence, like I said, lack of self-esteem, lack of self-worth. And for me, transforming my exterior to you know being more muscular, stronger, leaner, fitter, healthier, um, allowed me to really kind of transform my life and come into my own shell as a person. And like I said, grow into the person that I want to be, which is more confident, happier, and being able to communicate with others. Nice. Um, and also I think, you know, my job as a, as, as a coach has, has allowed me to do that as well. You know, even going bit before going into personal training, um, it was a struggle for me to, to communicate and pick up clients even. Uh, so for me, I knew that if I wanted to succeed at this game, I had to change me as a person. And I'm really the epitome of fake it until you make it, like, nice, you nice. know? Well, um, Every every person is an actor of their own ideal. Yeah. I heard this saying a long time ago. Essentially, if you want to become something, you you got to start acting in that way. That's yeah. it. You don't just become that thing. It takes a lot of work, a lot of self development. Um, yeah. And that's yeah. that's quite clear. That's something that you was prepared to to do, which mm. you know is is a tough challenge in itself. Yeah. How old was you when you when you started to train and? Uh, I was quite young, so I'd probably say around 13, 14 years oh, old. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is young. Um, and, but, what, and how was your relationship with your mum at that time? Growing up, it was a really complicated relationship. The the, the real big positive thing is uh, we had a, a, a very loving relationship. Like I was very, very close to my mum. But okay. how I got into coaching was the fact that, you know, because I was so close to my mum, I felt like I wanted to save her. I felt yeah. like it was my... Um, my job as a, even as a young boy, your duty, mm, kind of my thing. duty to, to save my mum. Yeah. And in a way, the reason why I couldn't, you know, I, I kind of, she passed away not so long ago. Oh, sorry to hear that. That's okay. Yeah. You know, but um, the, the fact that I couldn't save her is maybe a partial reason as to why I got into coaching, which is to save other people and have an impact on lives. And, um, you know, before I die as somber as it sounds to have, yeah. Uh, an impact on as many lives as I can, you know. Yeah, um, and you've already you've positive. already started that process, haven't yeah, you? Really, yeah. and you've you've. To be fair, your mission is already to some extent already completed, isn't it? Because it's always it's, evolving. It's, it's, always it's evolving. ongoing, yeah. isn't it? And and I appreciate that's your purpose. But you know, it's quite interesting because you know we say, oh, we want to become podcasters, and sometimes you you measure it on some point in time later on in the future when. Actually, you're already a podcaster now at this stage. You're That's already, it. You're already living it. it. You're already living and breathing it. So now it's about how far you can take it and how many people you can save and how many people you can talk to and you know and mm-hmm. and that's uh, it's it's just another mountain to climb and and it, that's what keeps us ticking and going. Hundred percent. So yeah. yeah, it's nice. But thirteen and fourteen. That's young. That was a young, really young. Really. Did, young. Was there like a group but of people that? Or I had I had a few the, friends that we used to train with. Yeah, and. Um, for me, like I said, it was more about just sort of uh, becoming stronger as a person, you know, even though it was a physical change, it was about me coming, becoming stronger, more resilient and mm. being able to really kind of cope with what I was going through in life. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like I said, it was a, a very up and down relationship where, you know, there were tough times, really tough times. Yeah, it's um, kind of like you, you, you don't want to see someone self-sabotage, especially your, your own mother. Yeah. Because yeah. it hurts, isn't it? And, you know, you want to see them. Yeah, happy yeah. ultimately. Yeah, so it's, it's, so, it's yeah. any family member. Any, that's the yeah, thing, isn't family, it? Yeah. yeah, but especially with your mum, I think any family member, of course. But with, it's kind of think, with, with your mum. It's a little bit different, especially as a yeah, boy. Is it? I think it is. Uh, it's tough. It, 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 it's, it's it's different. I think. When yeah, you, fair when enough. Seeing your mum yeah, yeah. go through it. Yeah, for sure. But um, so, yeah. So, so you start getting in shape, and you start looking. We're looking well, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, exactly. You're looking good, bro. You're looking good. Yeah. Um, but um, were you quite, were you quite uh, slim, like? Yeah, I was quite you? slim yeah, build, yeah, no. quite athletic built. Yeah. Um, but yeah, over time, that sort of evolved into to kind of coaching people and trying to help them transform their lives. You know, no, a lot I've... of the people that I uh, coach at the moment, they are almost like my former self. You know, mm. lacking in confidence, lacking in self esteem. Maybe they have gone through some level of trauma in their life or it's just the result of um you know not looking and feeling their best and wanting to be the best versions of themselves for their family for themselves for their career 
Um, because I, so, yeah. I remember seeing some old photos of you and uh, some photos of you of at, probably at your peak. Yeah. And it would look pretty damn impressive. Fantastic. Wicked. And, and, um, but the level of dedication that probably went into that, how were you, were you very just determined to, to get to that goal? Between that, funny you should say that, between that, um, that, that original sort of transformation, I actually lost my mum. So for me, it was almost like a tipping point. Um, of realizing that I didn't want to go down that path and I wanted to be, you know, not just in, in, in great shape, but also feel my best. Mm -hmm. And health had become more of a priority for me than anything else. And men mentally. And mentally being able to cope and focus yeah. on something. Yeah, 100%. Just to, um, yeah, lift yourself up, isn't it? And yeah. keep focused. That's it. Because it's easy, you can easily like lose your mind and go down rabbit holes. And yeah. I think when you train and you put your focus into something, you broke the you chain. Can, didn't, you broke yeah, a chain, didn't you? you really, you, essentially. Yeah, you've got that something to focus on, something to really kind of uh, drive. You know, I, I I work with sort of what I say, light energy and dark energy. Right, light energy is inspiration, is wanting to be the best version for yourself and what have you. Dark energy is what's maybe happened to you in the past. Okay, That's trauma. maybe trauma. Um, you know, trying to prove a parent wrong or ego. That's, that's what we call dark energy. And in my mind, you have to have a balance of the two. Okay. Oh. You know, there has to be some light energy, but there also has to be some dark mm. energy motivating you and driving okay. you forward in life. So you yeah. use you use that dark energy. And that's in my and opinion. You, and, and you use the light energy to kind of complement it. Hundred percent. And that's hopefully what I do with 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 my coaching business is is using that dark energy to to good use to to good? actually help people mm. and 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 help them you know, like I said, achieve the person that they want to be, the mm -hmm. best version of themselves. Because you can then repress that energy and you can hold it in and you you, you might not know how to deal with it yep. in certain ways and it might come out in other ways, you know, disease or... Um, um, or yeah, or yeah, whatever, aggression. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that you're using it for a positive, you know, mm. as fuel, yeah, it's good. You're, 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 you're facing it. I think everyone has a choice in life, you know. Um, no matter how hard things get, everyone has a choice and you either go down the path of... In my mind, for me, I didn't want to become a victim of, of my circumstances and, and didn't want to go down that route of drugs, alcohol, addiction and whatever else. For me, it was a, a simple choice and I wanted to be the best version for me. And now my, my son, you know, he's the most important thing to me. And I, I said this to you, George, like I would never, ever change what's happened to me in my past because it's made me the person that I am today and mm. makes me a better dad in a lot of ways you know that can show their kids love affection and what have you so you yeah, see it's quite okay. funny there's all there's always a trade-off yeah and and you know resonating with what you uh what you just said there was that you get you go through life and you have these terrible situations happen to us but then you get these oh, amazing things happen and it's you know sometimes you, you have to go through that to, to unlock that next opportunity in your life. But, mm, you know, true, you end up, you, you can end up not, if you said, oh, I don't, I wish that never happened to me, then you might not get this amazing thing that comes next in your life. That's it. Yeah. And, that's, and that's the only thing you've Everything got to, happens for a reason. Yeah. Everything yeah. happens for a reason. Yeah, it so. does. Yeah. It does. So, um, so, so DN Physique for anyone that doesn't know, right? DN Physique Coaching. If you want to find me on Instagram, but I'm not here to, 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 pro to promote That's collaboration. Like, <laughs> you, can, you can plug, bro. You yeah. can plug. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the invoice at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Is that your logo? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's yeah. nice, bro. Yeah. And how long have you been um, coaching? C coaching now? Uh, I've been coaching for since really, it, funny, I came out of uni, right? I, I did sports science at university. Came out of uni and I was stacking shelves in the supermarket and really kind of lost with, with what I wanted to do. Like, I, even though I did sports science, you know, they all said to me, there's no money in, in the sports and, and, and health and fitness industry. So for me, it was kind of like a lost cause. And I was like, well, I don't really know what I want to do. And a celebrity came up to me in uh, like Paddington, Bayswater area. Um, you named whilst, Yeah, uh, the female from Ali G. Uh, oh, uh, Julie. Not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not, not, not too sure. Here? Not too sure it was her. I think she was a copper on the film, but um, uh, yeah. she uh, <laughs> maybe not. The he was so like, he just, he <laughs> just really wanted to like get that. I had to drop that one. Yeah, Sorry, love but, it, uh, love it. Yeah, she came up to me and she said to me, you know, what are you doing? Like, you should be training. You look like you're you're in decent shape. You should be training people. Um, and that's how I kind of got into personal training. That I think that that's was deep. around. 
maybe 2010, 2011, yeah. maybe, maybe. Wow, man. So see how like an angel can kind of come on your path. Yes. And just that's, right place, right time, right message. That's exactly and then it. you were just like... That's exactly it. And I, I, I honestly believe that everything happens for a reason. And that's how I kind of got into coaching, in and amongst, obviously training myself and, and and now obviously reflecting on what's happened mm. as to why I want to help people and what my deeper purpose really on, on, on this earth is yeah. sort of thing so yeah fair play without sounding too cheesy and, and, and somber about do, it do you, well. know, do you know what it's interesting though because I think men like we well you know women as well like people let's say we, we all need a purpose in life um, yeah. And I think we're in this world now where we've got so much opportunities to do things, which can be quite problematic as well, because yeah. there's too much going on. Like back in our, our mum and day, mum and dad's era, there it was sim there was simpler a lot lives. Of simpler lives, right? Mm -hmm. Just go to work, get some money, and get a roof over your head. Yeah. That was yeah. now we've got all of these options, which creates such a level of confusion. And like I think one of the things that might actually scare people more is that. They say, oh, I want to do this, but then they see something good happening over there, so then they want to do that, and then they want to do that, and then in, in the scattered. end, they, they're scattered. Spread too no, thin. Spread too thin, yeah. have no conviction in actually what they're doing. Yeah. Um, which, you know, and I, I get it, because I, I was in social housing for, the, or in my industry for 17 years now, let's say which is a long period of time to do these things. Now, don't get me wrong, I worked for a couple of companies and I started my own business, but to stay in that one industry, doing that one thing, and I, I was 16 years old, I had no clue what I wanted to do at that age. Yeah. Dad was like, you need to go to work and do a job and stuff like this. And I was like, yeah, cool, let's go earn some money. But, you know, was it, was it something that I was really passionate about doing? I suppose the only thing I did know is that I was quite a practical hands-on person, so I kind of fell into that slot. A little bit but you know sometimes you, you you've got to go through this this kind of journey and actually try things out and definitely definitely but if you find something that you're enjoying or enjoying to some level of degree because it is work at the end of the day yeah like, you can only enjoy it to so much <laughs> yeah. um you know stay on the path as well you know definitely i'm i'm incredibly fortunate you know um i do count my blessings every day for, for being able to do something that i love mm. and 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 earn a living from it at the same time you know so um yeah very very ha like happy and yeah. fulfilled with with what i do oh, i could imagine um always giving back all the time isn't it that's it yeah for me it's it's, it's about impact it's mm. about having an impact before i die and that's pretty much what i want to do and and you know it's it, 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 like i said it, it may sound a little bit silly and cheesy to a lot of people but um that's kind of like the perspective that that i take with it and my yeah. coaching business and do, uh, do, do you know what i i'm really enjoying about this podcast process so far is that i'm speaking to quite a number of people and all of them have gone through some level of hardship and they're bearing a level of responsibility to shine the beacon into someone else's darkness yeah, yeah and nobody yeah. has to do that like most people, there's people that are just there for themselves, do it all for them. Um, but to actually go out there on a day day basis to help random people. And obviously there's some level of service. Like I maintain loads of homes in London. Yeah. That is what I do. But it is a service that you're ultimately giving back to people to do. You know, it's not like I'm selling drugs to them or anything <laughs> like that. So, um, yeah, so, so you know, you're being of service to people and that's like, I find that a very positive thing, especially if they if they actually do transform as well because, you know, because obviously I went on to your programme yeah. and I, I, like the f I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I really enjoyed it, but it was challenging and you got you got to hold yourself really accountable yeah, in that process. 100%. That was what I loved about what you did is you've done a very good job of holding that that person accountable you've got to like someone's you know it's like w with addiction if someone wants to do something uh they've got want it at the end of the day mm -hmm. um and as coaches we can only do so much we can only give you the right plan of action we can only support you and hold people accountable mm -hmm. you know to to the maximum potential that we can yeah um but ultimately the actions and responsibility comes down to the client's implementation yeah. um and yeah like I, i'm fortunate in the sense that Maybe because of the content that I put out on social media, the transformations that I release and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate with potentially the clients that I attract. 
you know they know that i mean business they know that i want the best for them and sometimes i'm going to have to you know have those difficult conversations and it's coming from a place of love yeah rather than a place of beration you tough know love. so yeah tough love but i'm serious with with results and 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 what i want clients to achieve and the potential that i want to see them um there, there's you know, some the amazing that yeah the, the, the transformations that you to. put up that have mm. been absolutely amazing for what some people have and achieved most people will look at them george and think they're fucking fake. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? well, most people think yeah. they're fake, well, but you know people that, yeah, have, that have been through the program yeah, and transformed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, ultimately it's... What, it's what's what's the hardest thing about the job? Uh, I'd probably say dealing with a lot of emotions, mm. you know, and, and wearing a lot of hats with that as well. You know, sometimes, like I said, you've got to toe a hard line. Sometimes you've got to be softer, more empathetic. Okay. Um, and it's knowing when to be that person in what certain situation and with what type of client. Yeah. Um, you know, not everyone will work well with, with, with me as a coach. And, you know, like I said to you, George, when I am, when someone's applying to, to be on the program, there's a, a level of due diligence on both ends, you know, them seeing if I'm the right coach for them and, and vice versa as well. Because if it's not going to work, it's not going to work and... Yeah. You're not going to force it, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. You want it to flow nice, and so uh, if someone was to come to you, like, what, how how would you work with them? So um, first off, it, it really starts with uh, a simple conversation, whether that's on text or WhatsApp or anything like that, um, and me kind of understanding their goals and and really trying to find out if I can one hundred percent get get them the result that they okay. they're after. Because yeah. if I can't, and I'm not a jack of all trades, like the people that I coach are specific. You know, my niche is very very specific. It's people that want to get into incredible shape, and like I said, use the the transformation really to transform their life and their confidence and their health. Yeah, the whole so, package. So yeah, so if someone comes to me and you know they're after, I don't know injury rehabs or anything like that it's not it's not my thing so your speciality which is good because then you specialize isn't it so you know what to kind of that's it and and, that's it. and it's not solely around weight loss can it it's also around weight gain as well I yeah imagine. so i have i have clients that are just generally looking to improve their body composition um mm. whether that's a transformation or whether that's muscle gain you know there nice. is it's quite a range of clients mm -hmm. um but the good thing is they know they know that I mean business, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that I want the best for them. And, and yeah. you're trialed and tested as well. You've already done that body yeah, transformation, yeah, so yeah. that reinforces your message. Doesn't that's it? it exactly. And mm. you know, for me, I think in a time where social media is rife and um, there's a lot of online health and fitness coaches and a lot of PTs that talk a good game but don't really deliver. I think it's really really important for anyone, and I'm not saying. To, to reach out to me but if you are thinking ever of getting a health and fitness coach make sure you do your due diligence on whether they can get you that result whether they you know yeah, have transformed people that are like you yourself to, isn't it who yeah. you listen to is very important yeah because you can be taking the wrong information there's a lot of bullshit so there's a lot of bullshit a lot of bullshit in the industry put your bullshit detectors on <laughs> make sure they're flashing people that's it <laughs> so, yeah but so what was what would you say was your toughest setback bro like in this journey and and how did you overcome it uh i'd probably say just generally i'd probably say just seeing my mom grow through that and and not really being able to save her and kind of coming to acceptance with I can't save her, you know, mm. just like in the same way that I can't save clients. And this goes back to what I was saying before, the client needs to implement and my mum needed to be that person that wanted to change. Did she ever try to get help by the way? Every yeah. time. Yeah, and really. as a kid, it was heartbreaking. It was mm. fucking heartbreaking, sorry to swear. No, no. It was heartbreaking mm. because you're constantly riding on that hope that one day change. or this time it's going to be different you know she'd come out of rehab she'd come out of charter lighting girl mm. and it would be like this time's going to be different and you'd be so excited about that and then just to fall trapped to the same yeah. bullshit that has been the same for the last you know five ten fifteen years yeah. but um ends up leaving a bit of a numb feeling there like yeah. over time where it's just like oh here we go again well for others it did for yeah. others it did yeah. but for me you kept having hope yeah all the time. i kept having hope and yeah, i felt powerful. like it was my responsibility and to this day i still do you know i still look back in uh in some regrets and and also in some respects to again like i said me not being able to save her it hurts sometimes even mm. speaking about it and saying it but you have to probably overcoming that that level of guilt yeah. mm -hmm. and 
in a way shame as well that I wasn't able to help her. The one person that brought me into this world yeah, is tough put, to you accept. Put it on yourself. Yeah, mm. and no matter how you, anyone you blame yourself, you, you blame yeah, yourself. You do, and but 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 like if 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 you want to be a hundred percent real about that situation, that there's only one person that was ultimately responsible for that outcome. That's it. Not a young child yeah. who's because who's got. That's it. Very little influence in that situation. Hundred yeah, percent. Obviously, because you know, it's usually your mum who wants to like, even though she was there for you, you were saying, but the dynamics usually the other way, isn't it? So yeah. when you're trying to, yeah. it's it's quite mm. deep trying but, to save your mum. And then what was how was your dad in all of this situation? So it was a, again a very very complicated situation. But my dad was was there, uh, you know, through my younger years. But he'd moved out obviously because of the substance abuse. Like they weren't getting on very volatile relationship as you can imagine and uh, it was best for him to kind of leave and I actually went to live with him sort of uh, during uh, like the end of primary school years uh, secondary school just simply because I couldn't cope at home with my mum mm. um, and dealing with it and you know certain things like being left at the pub or you know being locked out of the house it just gets too much and it's like you know it, it's too much to deal with so for me I, I, I it was best for me to live with my dad yeah mm. and um more stability there. More stability there. I could focus on, you know, my studies and everything else. And that's that's essentially yeah. what I did. Were, were you quite um, good at that at school? Were you at focusing and like... Yeah, uh, it, like that was the one thing that I kind of threw myself into. Nice. Like kind of like the physical side of things and the, the training in my later life. In my earlier life, it was more about studying and kind of just, you know, I was a recluse like a lot of the time yeah, um, really. as an introvert. Mm. So for me, you know wanting to be the best in education and wanting mm. to, to to do the best was the only thing I kind of knew, really. No, I rate that, you though, know? bro, because mm. there's, growing up where I'm from, like, a couple of uh, boys I know was, like, in a similar situation, but mm. they went, they just put everything into the roads, you know? They become, like, serious roadmen. Yep. And it's like, oh, yeah, he's like that because, you know, his mum's that or his dad's that, and it's like maybe they were more extroverted or yep. something like that but you put it into your studies bro so i, I really rate that and because mm. um, it could have gone the other way quite easily but i see it all the time yeah mm. drugs alcohol it could have gone yeah, yeah. Guns, a different violence way. yeah but f like I, I say this to everyone everyone has a choice in life and yeah, life do. is what you make it you know and and I, I said this to you george like i would never ever change that mm. for the world because it's led me to be a better dad a more loving dad with with uh, Brandon, my son, and um, the, 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 it's the thing, thing that's reflected. The, the thing I find is that the quicker you hold yourself accountable and responsible, f that everything that's happening is your, in your life is because of you, yep. is is the quickest way to get to changing it. Yeah. The more you say it's because of that person or because because I went through all of that where I blamed everybody else. It's easily all of done that stuff. Mm, it's yeah. Easily done. And it's Part easy to blame. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then all that happens is just wasting time. Like you might there might be a healing process going on. Don't get me wrong, but the more you keep putting it out there, like even when I have uh, with my staff in my business, is when something goes wrong, I generally blame myself. Or I don't blame myself, but how did I influence that situation happening? Yeah. Because I constantly comes back down to me being able to re-influence the situation yeah the yeah. more i keep blaming everybody else the stuff, less the stuff outside of your control and you can only control the things that are within your control yeah, you within know? your control true, yeah you know? yeah which yeah. is that your, your thoughts your actions and your behaviors and that's yeah. all you can control mm. um so yeah for me it was just about you know really kind of overcoming that and using it you like i said using that dark energy to really drive into my level of purpose in life which is to to help people you know on all levels from their body health and confidence wicked man. this, this is kind of like your rebirth isn't it through yeah through doing what you do like this is almost like a a second opportunity yeah i don't like for me i i believe coaching saved me because when i started obviously personal training like I said, I was very introverted, couldn't really communicate, couldn't talk to people, couldn't, you know, I would never dream of doing something like this and opening up. But um, it kind of gave me an opportunity to force myself to grow. It was sink or swim, mm, you know, yeah. it was whether I was going to be, take this seriously and be successful at it. I had to, you know, approach people. I had to be able to talk to people. I had to be able to relate to people and be empathetic. Um, and those are the things that I missed growing up. I didn't have that. 
So for me, coaching kind of saved me and allowed me to push into the person that I wanted to be, you know? And it also yeah. allowed you to give everybody else what you didn't quite get growing up and That's it. in the in the process. Yeah. So, and, and what I love is how you were totally introverted and you've also been on stage, haven't you? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've done... Um, <laughs> You done like talks in front of people. Yeah, so that's like, oh, it's, it's, cool, it's mad. Like, I, you know, I'm very much a believer is, you know, if you step outside your comfort zone, that's where growth is happening. Yeah. Um, and growth is important on personal and professional levels. Um, I'll always put myself in a situation where, you know, if I feel uncomfortable, it's got to be done. You know, whether <laughs> that's fears like bungee jumping or whether it's talking on stage or whether it's you know coming on a podcast coming on a podcast and mm. speaking about your story and opening up you mm. know it's all things that we Grow. struggle with but yeah. they're going to lead to to us being better people when y yeah yeah i can't see any negative uh, like i can't besides the judgment you've got the the but everybody struggles with this part right yeah. where you put yourself out there and this is when all the judgment starts when everybody I think there's a lot of in head talk going on 100% that, that we've got to be careful of in this game but the people that actually matter to you the most their opinion matters that's it that's it the, the other ones outside of that have no rele relevancy because it's not for them yeah like so that negative talk is is actually you got to check yourself and make sure you're not the one actually creating the baggage in in the relationship of what's going on. That's it, yeah. Because ultimately, like, it's either you flourish together or somebody's holding someone back or, yeah. you know. There's a, there's a quote with that, and that's your reality is not your thoughts or are not your thoughts. Mm. And that basically is saying that a lot of the stuff that, you know, happens on our, it happens on a day-to-day -day basis in the way that we think and we, the way that we act, you know, whether it's, you know, presuming someone's thinking something about us, it's all in our head, yeah. you know, it's all in our head most of the time. Mm. And we play these stories and, you know, based scenarios, on our, yeah, yeah. Our scenarios yeah, in our head yeah. based on our previous experiences. Mm. That's what it forms. One of our I other, like other that, guests, bro. yeah, one of our other guests said exactly the um, uh, same thing where, you know, he, f he felt this and he felt that and it's like, but how much of it was actually real yeah. and how much of it, and I'll tell you, like, if you don't find a way to get that out, communicate it to a friend, family, you know, whoever it is, you live inside that and you can create a whole different reality yeah. that yeah. that you don't actually deserve to have anyway. Like everyone deserves to have a good life and be happy and whatever that is in any walk of life. You know, beating yourself up over and over again has, it doesn't do any of service. It's actually extremely yeah. draining, extremely negative. And not only are you hurting yourself, but then you're hurting people around you in the process. Yeah. So mm. definitely you don't, get anything out of it when and then spin it all the way around and then you're helping body transformations and people like that's a it's a game changer and then all of that positivity is coming back to you as well yeah and now you're feeling like this overwhelming feeling of fulfillment and uh purpose very purposeful and you know like and and that's like and that's a commendable thing yeah you know? wicked no, i appreciate really like that let's repeat that again <laughs> our reality is not our thoughts yeah. because usually you hear you know your thoughts become your reality which is true in a way yeah because what you think you can become but ultimately on that journey you, you might have some negative thoughts limiting beliefs limiting beliefs limiting beliefs are fucking killer mm. you know they are a hindrance to people i oh, know you know yeah um what we tell ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis and what we believe others uh you know think about us and what have you that there is a, an absolute killer um what one of the one of the big things that i've never experienced before besides starting my maintenance business was once like the light bulb went off i had an unlimited belief like like i started getting momentum and i was like so i was opposite. i went completely the opposite i've been living in a whole world my whole life with self uh, limiting beliefs self yeah. and then i started the maintenance business and something went off in my head and i was like this could actually like turn into something. It's like, but where do you want to take it? And it's like, like I can't even see an end destination. That's mm. how deep Sick. it was for it's me. Like the lid come off. And I, yeah, and I was like, that's, that's, I was that's I, growth. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was. I, I felt that, so much positivity. That's from exponential it. growth. Yeah, <laughs> and it, and it literally we grew exponentially in a very short period of time. Very blessed, but it was amazing because I lived in such a negative place my whole entire life yep. that I started seeing what positivity looked like. Mm. And I was like, 
It's oh. like a drug. I felt yeah. like I was yeah. so high. Like I thought I was on. Yeah, yeah the so, mushrooms were well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're just sitting in your bedroom in your pants. Like, oh, well, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, and and that and that uh, like definitely carried me a certain degree. But then there was um, I think that that slowly changed, and I, I think I poured too much into that cup, and the mental health then started having an impact, and because. You know, when you want to when you want to grow something, you've got to do things in a very responsible and sustainable way. Yeah. Otherwise, you go far too quickly, you crash and burn, and mm. and that's essentially what happened to me in that in that process, basically. Yeah. Oh, was it? So, mm. what did you do then? To, uh... Um. So at that point, luckily, I started having enough help from my team. Yeah. But then I needed to do. See, what it was is I was too busy thinking about the external successes of life. And, and maybe materialistic wealth and money, but I was probably quite poor on the inside as mm. a human being. And it was quite interesting because growing up where apparently you had everything, yeah. but all you had was materialistic wealth, you didn't have, what you had a lack of was internal wealth, that, that actually hindered me for a long, long time. So, my real self-development and it, you was a big part of that as well to be fair appreciate um was probably more in the last three or four years yeah. than my whole entire existence yeah wow so i think i think we all fall trapped to that and it can be like i said it could be the stories that our parents tell us and a cultural thing like my dad was very much of the opinion that you know maybe not showing so much love and affection to kids but um providing money Provide, support yeah. and you know whatever it stability. is in that res and stability in that respect where was your dad from again and, and south africa south so africa, my, my dad's okay. south african my mum's indian okay. and as you know probably know those cultures are very much like um almost like money orientated you know success orientated or mm. it's not so you know i would say not so loving you know in, in yeah. terms of like with kids Okay. Yeah, which is interesting. Were they quite well for your mum and dad my, my, when well, they were child? When they no, were young? no, yeah. But so, um, so, so you know, it, it, I, I think we do, we do fall trap to, to to thinking that money, success, and what have you is it's is, a is everything part. and a fundamental part of <laughs> true happiness. Yeah. And it really it isn't. It is not now. No. It's not now. The, the only and I'll probably like help with that a little bit because my dad came. So my dad. There was six brothers and sisters. So there was eight of my mum and dad came over to the UK in the 60s and didn't have a pot to piss in, essentially. House shared with an African family in a townhouse. Yeah. Um, so our brothers and sisters all shared a room, like which was of uh, boys and girls. So, that's, so having absolutely nothing in life mm. and being desperate in that, in that period of time creates a level of, maybe trauma yeah. that forces you to end up thinking I need Wanna, something different yeah yeah, man, hunger the consequence of, while you get all of that <laughs> you get you sort out all of that then there's the consequence of lack of self love or lack of giving love and because you're too busy just trying to focus on making money all the time yeah. to yeah, have a yeah. provide a better life for yourself because that's what you really think you need mm. when and then there was the consequential stuff you know I Definitely on my side, I don't know about you guys, but where people were working all the time rather than actually had had a house yeah. or yeah. instead of a uh, uh, instead of a, a home, it was a house. Or so instead of having your family all around and and it was everyone was always busy and stressed out working and doing all these things. Yeah, I think is it, it, it's one of those things that you you have to kind of find the balance between the two, you know doing enough to, you know, be successful, earn a decent living, mm. but at the same time, you know, spend time with your loved ones and realize that life could be taken away from you tomorrow, man. And for me, it's about finding that balance between coaching and giving enough to my clients. And like I said, building the business and being happy with where I'm at, mm. but at the same time, you know, giving my, my, my son absolutely the all the attention and love and affection that he needs, you know, yeah. it's very, very difficult to find that balance between the two, but I don't want to fall trap to, you know, the grind, the and grind, then, yeah. the twenty four seven grind, and then look mm. back and think on, on my life. Well, what the fuck have I done with it? You know, mm. have I spent t the maximum amount of time and <clears throat> made the most out of the experiences that I could have with the people that I love? And if the answer is no, 
mate, I'm not yeah. going to be happy with that. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't sit right with you. Fair play, fair play. Sorry. And that, and that's your and and to be fair, like that's that's a good way of looking at it. I I just all I've come to the realization is that not uh, one sh- yeah. size fits all. Is that's that, not going to suit everyone. Yeah, yeah, and it's not. And and you know and. And and don't get me wrong, I'm sure if people had an opportunity to replay things, they'd like to maybe test out the waters and try it in a completely different aspect. But, you know, there's always a consequence. And if you, we were speaking about this earlier, about yeah. the pendulum swinging. Yeah. And if it, put, it swings too much the other way, it's, well... Then you're messed up with, yeah, something with providing else. for the family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which, yeah. Which, which is tough, you yeah, know. You can tough squeeze to be in. A house dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 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 um, so, so how did you um, get on stage? How, how did so, that happen? So I've I I have mentors throughout my whole life, nice. um, and in my way, it's it, it's like you know people that have gone through, you know, hardships with regards to business or life coaches or anything like that, um, who will accelerate your growth. So for me, um, you know, I've had many coaches, but this in this instance, it was a business coach, um, and he wanted to kind of highlight me or me to highlight the success that I've had with transforming lives the results that I get and what have you and it was just really about sharing my knowledge um on how I've done that and what I've achieved amazing um yeah, yeah. but yeah it was speaking in front of maybe 250 coaches or so um oh, wow. which is for the, an introvert the, that's yeah, that yeah, impressive yeah it's Coaching tough the coaches. it's tough okay. yeah, yeah it was tough yeah man <laughs> did you feel uh, really good like when you obviously before you must have been yeah, like breaking like, it like even before this you yeah. know you're you're thinking oh gosh like how am I going to come across what am I going to say um, and you know, I was thinking about you know what what I might say. You know, as I said, playing scenarios in your head. But then when you're up there, it's unscripted. You know, nothing comes across the way that you want it to, and you've just got to go with the flow. Yeah. Mm. So for me, it just came across kind of natural. Um, and yeah, I kind of enjoyed the the experience of being able to talk in front of a, a, a big crowd. Nice. Um, uh, there's always an element of imposter syndrome where you're looking back and thinking you know what do people want to listen to 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 this for but the end of the day you know if if in the same light if i can help one or two or three people who are listening um you know inspire them to 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 do something or to inspire growth in some sort of way or inspire action you know to put one foot in front of the other then i'm happy to do that you know that's a small part to play on my part and it could have a big impact on other people's lives so absolutely bro and what you and then after coming off stage like are you are yeah you sense of buzz- relief man sense it's of relief are you, are you buzzing <laughs> as well uh, yeah i don't know whether i was buzzing but a sense of relief more okay, so yeah, that's yeah. over and done it. yeah something you were yeah. maybe scared of yeah it's a big thing to do you know and you've achieved it bro so you're you're growing through that yourself that's it you're growing that's it. you're coaching coaches but you're growing on your own journey man so yeah yeah uh, so maybe forward. maybe like the more that i do that sort of stuff it will have you got plans to do it more have you maybe maybe not nah. not, not in the media it's time but, it's yeah, finding it's time, time isn't it time, like yeah. as much as we want to do all of these amazing things it's the responsibilities of what we've currently got that's it i mean oh. like I, I said this to you george like being a dad is, is is tough in terms of managing your time you know managing your clients managing your business making sure that's you know firing on all cylinders being the best dad that you can you know being the best partner that you can all those different things those different roles they it, it's, it's hard to get that balance so yeah it's time an issue and and you spoke about mentors. Um, I'm really curious by this one. How how old were you when you had your first mentor? Uh, really, quite late. Um, well, in terms yeah, of like me too, I, I, I undertook my own transformation, like with regards to health and body. Um, but thereafter, once I'd achieved the result that I wanted to achieve, um, I hired a, 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 a online coach to kind of take the reins a little bit and give me a little bit of breathing space mm. to be able to focus on my clients. Um, and that was really quite quite late, maybe I don't know, uh, maybe twenty twenty, twenty twenty, yeah, okay, maybe, yeah, no, maybe yeah. even yeah, before similar. that, twenty oh, twenty nineteen, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of like people helping with my business and you know whatever else, uh, probably over the last sort of three four years. Yeah, yeah, fair as well. Yeah, there's so much. Do you know what? You need help. Yeah, people don't understand, like necessarily understand the power of all of that. Yeah, and while and while you can get levels of support and help from people around you, when you've literally got a business coach, mentor, life coach, counselor, whatever they are, yeah, they are directly there 
for to help you support you through that journey mm. um track and track like there's measurements there's there's every there's so much 100%, involved you know. and, and you're getting that real kind of effort that and energy that you need to help really grow yourself even, even with health and fitness you know take what i do for example someone reaches out to me they're paying for speed they're investing in themselves they're investing me in as, as their coach but they're paying for speed efficiency and experience yeah mm. um and there's too many people that will be too proud to stay stuck their whole life not looking and feeling their best yeah and for me it's about breaking down that barrier and showing people that it can be done mm. giving them the belief even if they don't currently believe in themselves but also like i said giving them the qu quickest way to kind of get there um with the least amount of pain because people will go round and round in circles and you know people are very very quick to drop 5 10k 20k <laughs> on a holiday a car a watch Oh, when yeah, it comes to yeah. when it comes to their health and their fitness or you know furthering themselves in terms of counseling or life coaching or whatever for some reason people are stingy <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, they like are. That. yeah yeah but that is the thing that really impacts your life and impacts the the lives of people around you you know if you are at your 100% you are at your best everyone else is going to get a better version of you mm. you know um so materialistic things come and go but when it comes to investing in yourself your health your fitness your growth your growth yeah, as a person yeah, you know yeah. for me investing in mentors is important yeah same here but you know yeah, I'm, I'm, now I'm, I'm not a flashy person that you know drives a fast car or anything like that for me it's about furthering myself and growing um you know so yeah that's just my opinion but mm. other people might no, might disagree because i was i was tattering so i'm a tattooist and um I was tattooing for like five, six years without really getting anywhere, self-taught. Yep. And then um, I had a mentor, uh, Big Up Jim Love. <laughs> uh, yeah, legend. And, uh, you know, you, he showed you stuff you don't know, you know, because yep. you don't know what you don't know, yep. ultimately. So when you've got someone mentoring you and giving you that time and effort and showing you the way, you can, you know, you, you've got to, you can jump on it and learn all their mistakes and cut a lot of, yeah. The, wasted the time and yeah, effort bro. And wasted now, time and effort wasted and time energy. and effort because what took me say six seven years yeah i could mentor someone else and give it to them in two oh, years yeah yeah, yeah. so it's like how, how quick was your growth after that yeah it was it was it was quick man started exponentially growing and then yeah. i went in, into other studios to learn from other people and learn other techniques and it's, it's a big difference man a yeah. ma massive massive difference because you can learn from others and uh, they will help you grow isn't it the, the thing i like about that as well is that when you get educated on ways of doing these things it just opens up another pathway yeah and at the end of it you have to walk that path as well but the the point being is is that you get this kind of much more wider span view of something yeah. rather than being fully one-dimensional and then uh and yeah like things just take like, a lot longer than what you'd like them to yeah you know just like with dieting there are plenty of ways to skin a cat you know and you have yeah. to have a variety of tools in your toolbox to achieve an incredible result you know so the more people that you learn from you know that might be a different methodology it might be a different um tactic or whatever it is the more people that you learn from the better skilled craftsman you're going to be yeah. in any field that you're at um, so for me, I think it's really, really important to to invest, like I said, not just in your health and your fitness, but in your growth as a person. Like I think it's, um, yeah, it's important. Yeah. It's so important in saying, my life. So, um, what was it? If you work on your business, you'll make you'll make uh, like money. But if you work on yourself, you'll make a fortune. Kind yeah. Of thing. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Work on yourself yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than on well, that, 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 that that's the truth as well because the more you focus on internal wealth and growth, you can. You can make me, you can do whatever you want in life, like. But the more you're trying to focus on getting external things all the time, mm -hmm. yeah, you might have it for a period of time, but yeah. it's not more of a sustainable way of. Yeah, it's like, like you'll make things. an income. That was it. If you work on your business, you'll make an income. But if you work on yourself, you'll make a fortune. Yeah, like I, I, I think it, it, it goes back to similar like materialistic things. You know, when you buy materialistic things, there's a buzz for like a second. Mm. That yeah, goes. Short that's term. short lived. Short -lived. Yeah. You know, it's whether it's drugs. Whether, whatever it is, alcohol, mm -hmm. car, watch, whatever it is, mm. it's short lived. Short -lived. Um, but I think the real growth and, you know, investing in yourself, investing in your health and your fitness, that gives you a buzz for life, in my opinion. Absolutely. You know, it's man. not, it's, it's not short lived. Wealth. It's uh, like you said, it's real wealth. It's real yeah. wealth. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I liked um, 
so you, you you've I don't want to reveal too much because it's your service and product, but you've you've obviously got technology on your side when you're trying to do what you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, have you have you used ChatGPT at all for? No, I know that is a, a very big thing up and coming, and I know um, it's you great. Know, a lot it's, of people are utilizing it in their business. Mm. Um, for me, it's not something that my 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 role as a coach is is. And I think my 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 benefit of a coach is being empathetic and stuff like that. And I want it to come from me. Mm. Um, I don't want a robot telling me what how to coach someone or what to do or what to implement or my clients to do the same. You know. So for me, at the moment, I haven't even touched really? it. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't know. Yeah, the well, first thing about it to be honest. Because obviously, you you do your own nutrition plans, but yeah. I literally was watching something the other day and someone was like, write me a nutrition plan to lose uh, this amount of weight and this. And I'm like, this is great. Now, I don't know how sustainable it all is. And, you know, so th this is the issue, right? Everyone has all the information that they need online. You know, mm. if they want to lose weight, everyone has all the information that they want online to get that. Fingertips. But why is no, like, why is, why isn't everyone in incredible shape? Mm. There's a reason for that. There's lack of support, lack of accountability, a certain plan of action that isn't tailored towards them. Um, lack of responsibility. Lack of responsibility. Connection. And that comes down to, yeah, connection, human connection, um, relatability, all those sorts of things that a human will bring. Mm. So, you know, people say to me, oh, I can get all this stuff on Google. You can, but there's a reason why you haven't seen the level of results that you're after. And that is the reason why. Mm. Um, and that where that's where coaching is, a world in between yeah. anything like that yeah. you can get on the internet and that's why you know people say to me and i'm not saying this in an egotistical way or at all but people will say to me how do you get the results that you do and it's because i genuinely give a shit yeah you care you know um for me it's not about money it's not even about success it's about seeing someone get that result that they have invested in i want someone to have a 100x 1000x return on their investment and that's how I view it, you know, uh, when someone comes on board with me. Mm. Um, and I think that's what I portray on, on social media. And it comes back to me saying to you, George, that, you know, you asked that question about it's down to the, the implementation of the client. It is. But I think as a duty, as a coach, the way you personify yourself as well and put yourself out there, it's you will, will resonate with specific types of people. Mm. And if people are going to fuck about and waste their time, that I'm not the coach for them. I'm not going to just stand happen. there and, and, and let them piss about. For me, it's it's about seeing someone grow and achieve their best self. And if someone's on board with that, I will get them there. There's no two ways about it. I'm that confident. It's, it's, it ends up being a waste of your self-worth anyway, though, doesn't yeah, it? Because yeah, while, but a waste of their time as well. well yeah, you yeah. Know? And money. Like, yeah. I'm not here to, to take someone's money and then not deliver. Yeah, you want results. That's it. Yeah, you know, if you're not and willing it, to put the work, the graft in yourself, then why are you, you're not going to be willing to help them, isn't it? 100%. It's fair Otherwise, point, it's just, fair it's just yeah. long for everyone. And it looks bad on me as a coach. If someone's not <laughs> achieving a result and they're just kind of like, Getting you know, spinning or, their wheels or yeah. just chilling out on the program, that's yeah. not what I'm about. I'd yeah. rather, you know, I'd rather someone else take that space and, and <laughs> do really well. Give their money to someone else because it's yeah. not about the money. Go give it to someone that's else. Don't to waste your time and their yeah. time. And there's plenty of coaches out there that would probably oh, would take happily it. take it and, and just not give a shit. But I've, that's, I've, that's not I've me. been with loads of PTs over the years and some of them I can really just get a feeling for that they're just training you for the sake of training mm. you. They're not like, they're, they're not like holding you accountable. They're not yeah. really like, they're just there for the sake of being there and there is a lack of presence where I didn't find with you it was like it's authentic doing this doing that checking yeah. this measure this do measure that and it's like and it's like it locks you in to the situation I, th I think like you know uh, again one of the objections that I might get from someone or people even listening to this podcast is why not P PT why not personal training and this isn't a dig at personal training because I was a PT for many many years and the issue with personal training is it's very one dimensional. Mm. Um, you know, you turn up to your session, you do that PT session, uh, you see them for that hour. And then outside of that, it's like, bye, see you later. Yes. You know, you yeah. may do that two, three times a week, but outside of that session, the hour that you're training, there's a lack of support. There's a lack of accountability. There's certainly no education on around nutrition and lifestyle factors. Well, you know, if someone wants to achieve an incredible transformation and maintain it for the rest of their life, they have to be educated and taught along the way. Mm. 
So in my opinion, online coaching is a, a much superior, more rounded service. Um, and that's what you don't get from a robot telling you what to do and that's not what you get from a PT, PT. telling you what to do in the gym either mm. who's counting your reps mm. um, so online coaching is like a, a, a more well-rounded service Perhaps. where it yes. kind of covers all bases sure there's a focus on training because it is important in the transformation it's important for people to get stronger and perform at a higher level but in terms of you know accountability support education online coaching done correctly should support you along your whole journey mm. and, and do all those things nice yeah yeah that's very that's very interesting yeah that's powerful and, and um you've obviously been a, a person that's in uh, believe in self-development and you've had coaches out of curiosity off the top of your head how much do you reckon you've probably invested in yourself just uh <sighs> a lot of money yeah a hell of a lot of money um you know I'd be investing <laughs> probably about a mortgage payment a month and people would think yeah. you're fucking crazy. Mm. But for me, like I said, it's about um, it's about my clients getting the, the, the best version of me. It's, me. it's about me not being stagnant and not being complacent as well. Um, I want to provide the best cutting edge service to my clients. You know, if there's something that I can learn and pick up, whether it's, you know, you may go through hours of lectures with different mentors and I do this and and even my clients do that with me you know they may sit through a 45 hour training but they may even this podcast people may listen to the the, the length of it and think there's a lot of content in there but they may pick up one or two things that resonate with them 100%. and that's what you're paying for then one or two golden nuggets golden that can nuggets. transform the path that you're on totally you know I I, uh, I was listening to a guy called Rob Moore and he's a very uh, wealthy property owner in Peterborough. I think like from property portfolio side, maybe like a hundred million, just to give Gosh. an indication. And he was, and someone asked him, how much have you invested in yourself through mentorship? And he said like 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. And like for a lot of people, they, they really struggle to resonate with kind of investing in yourself because it's something you can't actually see mm -hmm. like as well. So, But people would drop that money on a holiday oh, a Friday night. or getting their teeth done or yeah. getting their hair done in Turkey wherever it mm. is you know they'd, they'd drop that money in an in instant yeah. yeah yeah. but when it comes to and, and it's it's almost especially when it comes to health your body and your health right there's almost like a stigma that you should have an innate ability to be able to change your body and not be having any weight issues or anything like that there is a stigma around that mm. people think that they should be born with the skill set to know how to change their body mm. and live a healthier life it's not that easy no it weren't for me you know it's really not easy yeah no i i, I would say uh, it was my coping mechanism for a yeah. long time while i was younger the only thing i do know is that although i was set substantial quite obese at one point i did go from like 19 stone down to like 12 stone so I had something in me to get me to back to on the right path anyway. Yeah. And and there's a lot f to be said about falling off in life and bouncing back. Yeah. Like yeah. you can you can kind of go on this path and everything's kind of naturally easy and but that's that's not where real growth happens. Real growth happens when you're either going yeah, generally going up or hitting some serious adversity in your life. Definitely. Definitely. And, and that's and I, it was powerful for me it was one of the most humbling experience i ever had later on in life where i i've, I've reached some adversity and i've never felt as rock bottom in my life at that point that mm. i did but for me at that point the good thing is it almost felt like the only way is up well i could have stayed down there in the in that place but i felt like i deserved a lot more than that mm. and i think we all deserve a lot more than that to live in that place um, but yeah, the, the, the kind of uh, point being is, is yeah, I, I, I struggled and, and, and it was quite interesting because, uh, we had a guest on, I, I, I told you this already, but we had a guest on who, who said it in pure intentions, by the way, but I'm going to bring it up for the conversation sake yeah. that he, he wanted to, he didn't want to be the lot. He wanted to beat the fat and lazy people. Right. Yeah. And at the specific time I was in his year in his class, he was talking about me. And the, the biggest issue that everybody faces in life is that we have a big lack of understanding of everybody else's shoes that we, they've walked through. Yeah. Mm. All they ever think from the outside is, oh, that looks wrong, or that, like, look at Dylan, or look at Sammy, or look at George, like, 
you know, and they always like, and it's always twisted, but they never have the full context yeah. of that. So any person that had a disability that people were judging and, and treating unfairly or, um, or somebody that was overweight, but nobody actually really knew what they were going through. Yeah. They just thought they were, say, a fat, lazy person, or, oh, look at that disabled person, like they had a choice, for example. Yeah, it was a label, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just a label. Yeah. And, and, and I think one of the biggest issues is that we all really struggle with compassion mm. for our, not only everybody else, but for ourselves. That's normally the inside talk of yeah. what we're talking to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, somebody, it's somebody, a of yourself, it's a reflection it? of yourself. So all of this, like, oh, I don't really like him. That's how you talk to yourself. Yeah, hundred percent. And yeah. I was talking to somebody, and you know, I don't even know if this is a problem, but who said I wasn't really sure about this other guest, and I was like, the thing is, you, you are doing exactly <laughs> the same thing that. Cause she, I said, oh, when are you going to come on my podcast? And they were like, no, 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 I'm never going to do that. Like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't put myself out there. You are doing exactly the thing that you would be worried about c coming onto a podcast. Yeah, you're you're almost kind of like it's a vulnerable. It's a vulnerable situation. You it's know, a vulnerable where you're situation. Expressing yourself and people yeah. are afraid to be judged. Yeah. Um. But going back to what you said there about challenges and obstacles, I think it's so important to for people to normalize struggle in life. Um. I think there's not enough talk about it. It can swing the other way where we may be a little bit too soft in life. Um, where I think we need to normalize struggles and problems and yeah. realize that it's a part and parcel of life. And those struggles, those problems, those obstacles that you encounter are like this, they're opportunities to grow and yeah. learn from the experience yeah. and overcome those problems. Okay. When you overcome those problems and those struggles, you grow from that experience, you become a more resilient person, you become a stronger person. Mm. You know, with regards to health and fitness, you become a leaner, stronger person who is you know, more capable of dealing with struggle and problems in life. Yeah. Yeah. And that is crucial to maintaining a transformation, you know, yeah. and it's crucial in this respect to dealing with life mm -hmm. because life is going to throw you curveballs and you either fucking pick up your shit yeah. and move on from it mm. or you let it defeat you. And there's, mm. there, there's a reason why, yeah, we, we need to push through and, and overcome those struggles. That's you know? a wicked message there, bro. Yeah, you beat you to the punchline. Isn't it? No, it's good because... Um, because <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of people that are struggling and going through hardships in many walks of life in many areas and you know like you can get knocked down and knocked down and knocked down and people sometimes they don't want to get up and they don't want to continue but you have to you have to get up you have to keep going yep. not give up and just keep pushing isn't it and learning yeah. and, and sometimes that hard sort of line you need to have that hard talk and hard line if not with someone else you know with yourself Self, yeah with yourself you need to remind yourself of that sometimes mm. and um yeah i kind of think like you know back to, to to what's happened with me in life you know i'm no different to any other person that's struggling you know growing up and what have you there's plenty of people that have had it far worse um but i go back to that and think you know if i encounter a struggle or a problem now it's fucking nothing compared to that. Yeah. yeah you, know? you know, and you only get stronger, more resilient when mm. you've, when you've been through hard shit in your life. Yeah. Do, do, do you know what's um, interesting, what you were just saying about, you know, people get beaten down and down and down. And, you, you know, we, we, what we should do for ourselves from a deserving place is, is bring ourselves back up. Some people naturally stay down and find comfort in that staying down. I think what, what you got to, I don't, I don't even know if there's a right or wrong at the end of this, by the way, but all it boils down to is you're going to get to the end of the road one day and you're going to be on death's door and you want to look back and know that I gave something my absolute best mm -hmm. and tried my hardest. And, you know, I don't know what that try the hardest looks like. Yeah. There's, there's no way to measure that because only you'll know yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and even if you fail, at least you tried, isn't it? At least you tried. To not try is to not know, so mm. you would never know. But um, so, what would be your message to the world, bro? If you had a message, probably to to keep fucking going, you know. And like I said, probably what I just said there about normalizing struggles and problems—it's part and parcel of life. You know, I'm no different to any other person. Um, but I came on here really just to kind of tell my story and if it helps inspire people to to overcome adversity, challenge, obstacles and kind of use that dark energy to push forward in life and in some way have 
some level of impact, whether it's on your life, whether it's on the people that are closest to you, you can change, you can transform. And um, not to be t tied down by circumstances or situations or even what people think of you. You are what you make your life. Mm, you know, amazing. and that's hopefully what I wanted to get across today, and and hopefully I've done that in a justifiable yeah. light. <laughs> you have, you have indeed, bro. It was <laughs> yeah, a yeah, thank absolute you. Absolute fire, man. Thank yeah, you for all yeah. your. I appreciate you having me on, yeah, and yeah. really appreciate yeah, you. You've been you fantastic, guys, um, mate. So I appreciate you coming on, on as well. Being here, it's, bro. it's incredible yeah. what you guys are doing. So yeah, keep bro, appreciate it, bro. You. Like I said, keep fucking going. Yeah, man. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's it. You too, bro. Dylan, thank you. No problem. You're welcome. Thank you. Big love to you guys as well.